The S20 Ultra is one of the most promising camera setups on the market with 8K video recording, 100 times zoom capability, and a massive camera bump. So when I got my hands on this, I was beyond amped to immediately go out and actually test the camera. So that's what I did. Welcome to part one of this MBT style camera comparison featuring the S20 Ultra. So you're probably asking yourself, why are there multiple parts to this camera comparison video? Jacqueline normally just does one video for the camera comparisons. And you're right to ask that, and there are three reasons why. First reason is that the S20 Ultra is one of the most feature-packed smartphones in terms of its camera, so it didn't make sense to put all of these features into one video and not cover any of them thoroughly enough. I feel like they each need like a spotlight on them, so that's one reason. The second reason is that the S20 Ultra shoots 8K video, and I did not want to make this entire video 8K and upscale it. And then the the last reason is that I know that pre-orders are starting and I know a lot of people are kind of basing if they're going to pre-order or not based on the camera. So I wanted to get you like footage out right away of some of the things that you can expect from this camera. Final note before we jump into image number one, the S20 Ultra has an 108 megapixel mode, which is crazy. And you can definitely see a difference in detail when you zoom in between the 108 megapixel photos and the regular photos. So I'm definitely going to test that in an upcoming video. But for the photos in this video, they were just taken in the regular megapixel mode. Now that we've cleared that up, let's dive into image number one, a portrait test. The Pixel 4 has a regular lens and then a telephoto lens, but when it takes portrait photos, it takes it with the regular lens and then it crops in a little bit. So you're going to notice that the framing on that camera is going to be different than the 11 Pro and the Ultra. The Ultra and the 11 Pro both have a telephoto and a regular, and it actually gives you the choice between shooting in telephoto portraits, which looks like similar to a DSLR, and then a wider portrait, which looks like more smartphone-esque. It's really nice to have that option. I'm bummed that the Pixel 4 does not have it. In terms of the shot, the Pixel 4 and the iPhone 11 Pro look pretty bad here in terms of skin tone. Like I'm a greenish yellow on both, whereas the S20 Ultra gives my skin tone a cooler look. It looks a little bit too purple for my taste, but I like it much better than the other two, which kind of just, the skin tone looks really bad in them, I'm not gonna lie. In terms of sharpness, my face definitely looks the sharpest in the Pixel 4, and it also looks like the most contrasty, but almost to a detriment because my eyes look kind of black on the Pixel 4, whereas on the Ultra and the 11 Pro, you can actually see like that my eyes are brown. So I love a contrasty image, but sometimes it's taken too far to the extreme, and it seems like the Pixel 4 did that here. In terms of edge detection, the Ultra and the Pixel 4 killed it. They did a really good job. The iPhone 11 Pro also almost killed it, but it lost it at the top of my head and on the right side near my hair. The S20 Ultra has the best of both worlds in terms of like a good cut, but also a realistic blur. So it's my favorite image out of this sample. Popping out to the wider lens, and I just want to note, I'm looking here because I'm doing a live analysis for you. The Pixel 4 is kind of outclassed in the hardware department, as I said, because it can't go to the wider lens, but it still tends to be one of the best images or even be the best image in certain cases because the software image processing is amazing. All right, next image. How good does this breakfast burrito look? Caught a fire, right? Which phone captured it the best though is what I should be answering. So I'm gonna answer that right now. Uh, the Pixel 4 or the iPhone 11 Pro? The S20 Ultra missed the primary area of focus, leading to an image that isn't really that pleasing to look at. Yikes. The Pixel and the 11 Pro, however, nailed the focus. So your eye directly goes to like the focal point of the image. The Pixel 4 definitely went to a cooler tone here, which I think looks good sometimes, but I do not like cooler toned photos when you're photographing food or when you're photographing people because it's just not as flattering to the subject. I do definitely like the contrast that the Pixel 4 does add here. The iPhone tends to produce a flatter image, which means that there's a lot of room to edit. But someone in the last video pointed out in the comments that a lot of general consumers do not edit their photos. And I agree with that. So if you're just looking to like post a photo, sometimes it's nice to have that added contrast and not have to worry about adding it in post. So if you're planning on not editing and you like the contrasty look, the Pixel 4 pretty much delivers on that contrasty look every single time. All right, next image is a picture of a tree. And I gotta say, I'm a sucker for perspective images like this. And they all did a pretty good job, which made me really happy. The exposure on the Ultra and the Sky is much better when you compare it to the 11 Pro and the Pixel 4. It's not that those two phones are terrible, but their sky's a little bit more blown out in comparison. Again though, the Ultra did not do the most pleasing focus in my opinion. So like the front part of the image is really out of focus where on the 11 Pro and the Pixel 4, they both also did not focus on the front part of the image, but the roll off of the focus from like the mid part of the image to the front is just more satisfying to look at, whereas the S20 just feels a lot more harsh. The Pixel 4 did not get the right color tone on this though. It looks super off. The Ultra went to a much more cool color tone, which was not really that accurate, but it looks pretty nice. And I think it kind of suits this image. But in terms of accuracy, the 11 Pro has the most accurate color tone for this picture. Did someone say a portrait mode test? 
Yeah, you know I love those, so I'm testing it. The Pixel 4, as mentioned before, is a little bit more punched out than the two, just something to note. In terms of other aspects of the image, skin smoothing is here again on the Samsung Galaxy device. The Ultra has it. Even with beauty mode turned off, it still like smoothed out my skin to the point where I was like, oh no, did I misfocus in the shot? And I zoomed in, and I didn't. It's just that it really smoothed out my skin. Because of that, in comparison, the 11 Pro and the Pixel 4 look a lot sharper. The Ultra is probably the most flattering image, but if you're paying $1,400 for a phone, I think think you want detail. It would be really nice to have the option to turn off skin smoothing entirely. Edge detection looks pretty good across the board, but I gotta give it to the Pixel 4 and nailed it around my hair even when the wind was blowing. That's impressive. All right, the next image is a dynamic range test. You know how much I like those. And this actually was kind of interesting because the 11 Pro and the S20 Ultra did a really good job, but the Pixel 4 looks like kind of desaturated, like the sky lost its blue color. So it's my least favorite image here. The Ultra's image though, kind of lost some detail in the pavement because it made it so contrasty. Whereas the Pixel 4 and the 11 Pro retain that detail, but I think that the S20 Ultra's image is still better than the Pixel 4 because the skies that you're gonna see first and the Pixel 4 made it look like it was a cloudy day when it just was not. Then I punched down in the same scene to see what the ultra wide would look like and the Pixel 4 does not have an ultra wide lens. So again, this is like a hardware limitation. It's kind of a bummer that Google has limited their phone in this way like so much because it's really hard to compete with the 11 Pro and the S20 Ultra. Like if you're trying to give a consumer recommendation for a camera and they want a lot of value, you can't really recommend the Pixel 4 because they can get a lot more of a diverse selection of photos with the Ultra and the 11 Pro because of the wide angle lens. Both wide angle lenses did a really good job capturing this image. I like the 11 Pro a little bit better here because the detail in the car is nicer. Like you can see that the car is navy on the 11 Pro, whereas on the S20 Ultra, it added so much contrast that you really cannot. Okay, this next image set is to show off the zoom feature on the Ultra. So I'm not sure if you can see it, but on the bottom of this, it says 100 times space zoom. And that's because this phone has 100 times zoom capability. It's basically 10 times optical and 10 times digital and it's really impressive. So in terms of practicality, I haven't fully discovered it yet if it's like completely practical or something that I'll be using like three weeks down the line. But today actually there was one use case where I found it really helpful. There was a sign that I needed to read and it was too far away and the text was too small and it was important that I read it and I did not want to like have to walk all the way up to the sign. And I just used this camera and I zoomed in and I was able to read the text on it. So that's pretty clutch. In this scenario, this is just a regular photo from far away. I'm not really gonna talk about the properties of it much except for the fact that the Pixel 4 blew out the sky and it also looks so desaturated. Like there's really not a lot of color here, which is kind of a bummer. But what I do wanna talk about is the zoom. So this is a hundred times zoom on the S20 Ultra and it's pretty crisp for a hundred times zoom. Like look at that actual writing on the sign. Now, it took a couple tries to get this framing because 100 times zoom, any like handshake at all will completely change the frame of the image. And the S20 Ultra tries to help you with that by providing like a little viewfinder in the top right so you can see what you're looking at, which is really helpful. But it's hard because you have to have really stable hands or a tripod to get the exact shot you want. What I found to be helpful if you do have an S20 Ultra is to go to 10 times zoom first and then kind of get like the general framing there and then zoom in the rest of the way and then it's easier to frame. But in terms of sharpness, I was really impressed. Like this 100 times zoom photo is really solid and the other phones just can't compete with 10 times zoom and eight times zoom. All right, this next photo is another example of that. So this is another street shot and quickly just to address the primary photo, the S20 Ultra and the 11 Pro look really nice here. The Pixel 4 again looks a little bit desaturated. It seems like it has a lot of trouble saturating for a sky and the like subject of the photo, which is kind of a bummer and it's been kind of prevalent where a lot of the photos look a little bit desaturated to me. Otherwise the sharpness is pretty good on the Pixel 4, but I would have loved to see a little bit more of a saturation. You could add that in post, but if we're talking about the consumer that just uploads right away, it's kind of a bummer not to have it. The more impressive thing though here for me is the actual zoom range. So again, I zoomed it to 100 times and I could read the sign that was way off in the distance, which is super nice. And you could read it really clearly. It says trucks over 18 feet. I just think that's incredible that you can actually get that much detail. It's not like you'd want to like post this photo, but I see the 100 times being really useful to like read something or see something from really far away. So we've seen 100 times zoom, but the next comparison is 10 times zoom on the S20 Ultra because I think that that's like a fair comparison with the 11 Pro. The Pixel 4 only goes to eight times zoom, so it's a little bit wider. But when we look at 10 times zoom on the 11 Pro and 10 times zoom on the Ultra and then eight on the Pixel 4 and we compare that, the 11 Pro actually looks really, really similar to the S20 Ultra. 
Like you don't necessarily reap the benefits of having extreme zoom range when you're at 10 times zoom, like the 11 Pro can hold its own. And so can the Pixel 4 in terms of eight times zoom. It's really when you get to like 30 times zoom or 100 times zoom that you're gonna see like that bigger impact because the 11 Pro and the Pixel 4 just can't do it. But at 10 times zoom on the 11 Pro and on the Ultra and then eight times zoom on the Pixel 4, these all look pretty decently sharp to me. Okay, in terms of selfies, I just took a general selfie on all of them. The Pixel 4's selfie is a lot wider than the others. Like it's great for group selfies, but it looks like I'm holding the phone like extremely far away from myself even though I'm not. And I also just feel like it's like the most distorted, least flattering image. I think that the iPhone 11 Pro is the most flattering image in this one. Also the S20 Ultra is a flipped image of the iPhone 11 Pro. So you could always like flip the image if you like, like a certain perspective better than the other. But out of the box, this is the flip that you're gonna get on all the phones. The Pixel 4 and the 11 Pro are the same flip and the Ultra is not. In terms of the background, they all did blow out the sky behind me, but I'm in focus and I'm pretty sharp on all of them. The skin smoothing is still very prevalent on the S20 Ultra, as you'll see in this example. Then I took a portrait mode selfie, and in terms of edge detection, they all did a pretty solid job, although the bottom of my hair in the 11 Pro is a little bit out of focus, whereas on the Pixel 4 and the S20 Ultra, it's not out of focus. The Pixel 4 skin tone looks a little bit too yellowish and greenish to me again, as we saw in like the first example in this video. If I had to pick one image out of these that I like the best, it'd probably be the 11 Pro because the S20 Ultra and the Pixel 4 kind of gave me like a unflattering skin tone with the Pixel 4 being absolutely the worst. But in terms of edge detection, which this test was kind of for, they all did a pretty decent job with the portrait mode. All right, we're getting through these. This next image is just like a top-down quick snap. Like if you wanted to just get an interesting color, I like the yellow in this one. The iPhone 11 Pro made like the most saturated yellow, which I think pops the most and was also the most accurate. Whereas the S20 Ultra and the Pixel 4 both look like a desaturated yellow which isn't as nice, but the sharpness on the Pixel 4 and the contrast is really nice, and the sharpness across the board on all three of these images is pretty good. Okay, another portrait mode test, but this time it's not of me. This is just a standard meter test, and this is where we see like the Pixel 4 software being great. It's limited in the hardware department, but it sometimes it just nails the photo, and this is one of those times the edge detection on here is just fabulous. The 11 Pro and the S20 Ultra messed up the far part of the meter, whereas the Pixel 4 just got it. It looks really good. It would be nice to lower the background blur a little bit. This is just a standard background blur. So obviously I would like to tone that down a little bit, but in terms of edge detection, it just nailed it and contrast, it nailed it. So this is my favorite image out of these. Pixel 4 takes the cake on this one. All right. And then the last image, this was a long one to shoot and probably a really long one to edit. My future self right now is probably like freaking out with this edit, but it was a fun one to make as well. So this last image, I tried to do a portrait mode test, but this wall was really difficult for the phone. So on the S20 Ultra, it took like a lot of time before it realized that I was like the subject and that the background should be blurred. And on the iPhone 11 Pro, it just didn't realize. So it's still in focus, but I still think this is cool to look at for like color and contrast. And in terms of these actual photos, skin smoothing again is here, that's a theme. Contrast, it's probably the most contrasty image on the Pixel 4. And in terms of skin tone, I would say that the iPhone 11 Pro and the Pixel 4 look pretty similar, but the iPhone 11 Pro looks slightly more saturated to me. What do you think of this image? I'm kind of like, it's a toss up. I don't know which one I prefer the most out of these. So let me know in a comment below. I'm gonna have a lot of other coverage on the S20 Ultra camera and the phone as a whole. Like, look at this beautiful display. How could you not make a video on this? So full review comment, camera comparisons, the works. If you enjoyed this video, I did put a lot of time into it, so a like and a subscription would mean a lot if you want to see future content as well. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.